Bună ziua și bine v-am găsit! Eu sunt Vlad Andreescu și astăzi suntem la Maranero, asediul Scuderia Ferrari, unde discutăm cu Nicola Longhe, pilot al Scuderia Ferrari eSports Team. Este pilot profesionist numai că online. Vom discuta despre cariera lui, pasiunile și cum a ajuns în această zonă, dar și cum își menține toate conturile sigure împreună cu cele mai bune soluții de securitate. Nicholas, you are the youngest driver to step on an official podium in an F1 esports uh, championship. You started with karting yeah. and see your future also in physical races. How does the little Nicholas, who loved racing karts, see his career right now in the esports world? Well, he would be uh, probably would be thinking that it was a dream, to be honest, because. He's always loved uh, motorsport and growing up watching it with his, thanks to his dad and uh, it was always like a, our thing, you know, me and my dad watching Formula One in the weekend and I always told them like, yeah, one day I want to drive one of those things, <laughs> they seem very fun. And then one day we found out about um, F1 Esports and uh, that's when my mind was like, okay, well, I want to try this. So for Christmas he got me a wheel and uh, that's when I started uh, driving the game. And, Improving. <laughs> What kind of training gets specific to esports drivers in, in F1? Yeah, no, I think F1 esports is probably 90% a mental sport and 10% physical sport. <laughs> um, because obviously, yeah, we when we do finish a race, we are all sweaty and all tired with a high heart rate and everything. But at the end of the day, it's all in your head. Like when you're doing, especially in qualifying, it's probably the most focused and stressful period of of your life basically you're just sitting there shaking all the time and it's super important to con be able to control this um, this pressure that you have so mental preparation i think is probably the most important in my opinion in a, in a competition like this when P p1 to p20 is separated by just a couple of tens and a small mistake can cost you so many positions i used to have a mental coach and also physical coach to be able to have good reflexes and all that so it's always uh, a good bonus to have How did the sport keep you safe uh, as a professional esports driver? In our case, it's much more digital uh, when we're talking about security. Uh, so, for example, uh, I know last year for F1 Esports, they implemented some remote control type of um, a system where they could like always check that our PCs and all our accounts and everything was safe and everything was running smoothly without any It, uh, interference from the outside world or anything so I know there's like implementations that the competition does to make sure that there's no such thing as uh, yeah like things interfering with the championship and that everyone has a fair shot what career advice would you give to a young person uh, who is starting right now playing f1 maybe with a small rig at home not not like this one Uh, well, I think everyone starts somewhere and for example, I started in a, in a desk chair where I put the wheel on, the, on, the, on my wooden desk that would move all the, everywhere. It wasn't very, uh, it wasn't, uh, very comfortable, I guess, yeah. but um, you're just not thinking too much, you're just enjoying your time. But if you really want to like, pursue this as an actual like, um, uh, career, we actually don't start with the mindset of that being like this, our goal, like become an F1 esports driver, it yeah. just happens because you, you see that we're improving. And um, But if you do start with that mentality, I think it doesn't happen overnight whatsoever. Yeah. Um, it took me uh, around a year just to start to become really competitive. And uh, it was a year of a lot of training and practice. How do you um, think about the, the, the challenge Yeah. of being part of Scuderia Ferrari, which is such a historical team, yeah, yeah. and now being an official driver for, for the yeah, yeah. eSports uh, Ferrari. So as we all know, uh, Ferrari is the most historic team in the, in the Formula One. Uh, in real life, uh, they, haven't, well, they haven't missed a single year of Formula One. I think it's probably the most prestigious and looked, uh, looked up team uh, in, the, in the world of motorsport. I think it's in everyone's dream, especially when they're kids, when they think of motorsport and cars yeah. they think oh the, the red car you know the ferrari being able to tell someone yeah i drive for ferrari 
it kind of feels like surreal that you're just you're pretty much at the, at the top at this point and obviously there's more pressure that comes with it uh, but I think it's what then pushes pushes us and makes us even more focused when the competition does come around. And how long can a career be? If we look at real life in Formula One uh, we can see for, like drivers that are already getting in their 40s like Fernando and yeah. Lewis is getting close to that and I don't see why it could be any different to esports. I mean, obviously, people would think, oh, they're younger, they have so much, to, so much more to learn, and they can, uh, I don't know, just adapt better and all that. But there is no age limit where you should stop because you, you should just because of your age. I think personally, I would love to make the transition to real world at some point. I, I, I don't think I would do this for another 10, 15 years, for example. But I think somebody could if they really wanted to. How did your family support your your virtual uh, endeavor in this in this path of, of becoming a driver? What would be your message to to the parents around the world who see their kid passionate about uh, F1, passionate about the game, um, on on supporting them in this in this path? Maybe you don't think at first I want to be a professional racing driver, but what should be uh, their thinking? So in my, in my case, uh, my dad was very supportive. He, he's actually super into it. He follows everything. He knows even more things than me sometimes, <laughs> and he surprises me. Uh, but for example, maybe for my mom, it was a bit more uh, like harder to comprehend at the beginning. She was like, "Well, you're like you're just playing a game and and living off of it. Like, uh, how does that work?" And if you if a parent sees their their child uh, really get into it and is passionate about it, I don't see why they should deprive them of just maybe trying and see where it can lead to. F1 personnel exchange state-of-the-art uh, information about car developments, uh, the technology, so they of course need some privacy. In the esports arena, how do you keep setup strategies and tricks secret in order to gain an advantage from, the, from other teams in the championship? Obviously, as every year there's a new game that comes out, it's the, the most important thing to do is keep all your secrets to yourself and for every team. And we we do a lot of like live streaming on, on Twitch, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's always important to to make sure that you you make public what is what is okay to make public and keep private the things that you need to keep private. Um, obviously, we're not gonna share setups and like settings to like the whole world because you know it's something that takes work to find and we're not just going to give it away for free you know it's also yeah. what could make us fast and can make us win the championship and may, it may not be aerodynamics as in formula one or engine because we all have the same car performance yeah. in the championship so for in our cases is setups it could be like uh, wheel settings or like it could be many things that obviously i can't go into much into too yeah, much detail course. now because thank you very much thank you guys thank you so much